Hey, this is Chris from Branding Gear Games. And this is Jonathan from Branding Gear Games. So this week we're going to be showing you the 094 version of Path of Exile. Um, basically we're playing this on our internal staging server and it's going to make its way onto the beta test servers in about two days from now. This is a relatively final copy. I guess we're using this as an opportunity to do final playtesting as well as to show you some of the changes and just, you know, keep playing the characters we were playing last week for another hour or so. So I'll log into Chris Marauder. The first thing you'll notice, I guess, is that we've revamped this cargo hold scene a little bit. It's actually, uh, it actually looks a lot different in 095. This is kind of halfway there. Um, there's kind of going to be guys sort of lying on those shelves and so on, kind of, uh, you know, like, I mean, they're prisoners, obviously. Yeah, there's the uh, quartermaster who talks to you if you create a character. You'll be able to see that in-game in a couple of days. So the first thing you notice when you log into a 094 character is that we've reset all the passive skills. And we've done this because we made substantial changes to the tree. And it's worth noting that this is something we do relatively rarely during the beta. And it's best if you get your character's uh, passives reallocated correctly when you do so. So we put up a warning here explaining that we've changed how the requirements work a little bit. And for some characters, this may mean a little bit more thinking has to go into um, how they're going to get the requirements they need. So an example is, if I look at my character now, I don't meet, for example, the intelligence that this gem required. This mace here, of course, requires a substantial amount of strength that I don't have. Because my guy is relatively low level, it's pretty easy for me to get these values. When I go to the passive tree, I see that all my points have been reset, and I can see at the top I've got 11 to allocate, and thankfully I only need to get a small amount of strength and intelligence. Some of the high-level characters using high-level stuff may have much larger numbers here, so just make sure to check them out before you allocate the points. Um, so we have these keystone passives on the tree, which you can see, they have a special symbol around them, so you can find them. And don't just make a beeline straight for one of those without looking at the requirements that you need. It means when you plan your character, you're going to have to think about both things. But basically, these keystones do relatively impactful effects on your character. Do you have any favorite ones you want to talk about? Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, one of the biggest changes is obviously blood magic. Um, so that allows you to spend your life instead of mana skills. Now, some people think that it converts your mana to life, but it doesn't. It just simply removes it. Um, so it may not be as broken as it originally seems. But because you have generally more life than mana, um, there's quite a lot uh, that it allows you to do. And of course, you can just uh, forego all of your plus mana um, items in order to get plus health ones instead. Which is um, that can be very good for certain builds. So that changes up uh, the gameplay quite a lot for those characters. Yeah, a character that's using blood magic finds that it has very different priorities than a normal character, and this is quite cool. It's like another class basically that you can play as a blood magic guy. Yeah, we really wanted to have a kind of trade-off for uh, almost every um, of these keystone passives. There are a few that don't have a negative, um, and where the the disadvantage is kind of that you have to sort of get to where they are, and that they um, help your party members. <laughs> yeah, well, in this case, yeah, this just helps your party members. But um, for, the, for the most part, we kind of try to design them um, to not be completely obvious whether or not you'd want to take them. x is, um, you know, one of those ones where it's just purely uh, advantage. Yeah, in this case, a small advantage. But, um, you know, for example here, Eldritch Battery converts all energy shield to mana. Um, that one there, you've got to be very, very careful about um, because, you know, obviously you're very, very vulnerable, but then you get a huge amount of mana. Um, you know, so, I mean, that kind of thing, um, you've got to be really... You've got to be pretty careful when you take them um, that they're not going to be actually something that ends up uh, making your character worse. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's a pretty big change in a lot of cases. And uh, there's only 12 of these on the tree right now, but we plan on having a lot more in the future. Yeah, we have uh, some neat designs. Yeah, some neat designs for some stuff. Uh, these are the ones that were kind of easier for us to implement, um, so that's kind of why we've done them first. But there, there are you know, a lot of different interesting things that we're planning on doing at some point. Yeah, it's very likely these will move around a lot. And yeah, so, I mean, right now they're a little bit uneven because the you know they just happen to be the ones that we chose. But yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll be adding quite a few more of these as uh, as the patches roll out. An, an example of where it could be useful, I mean, this Resolute Technique one is relatively near to my Marauder start position here, so I could decide on this character long term. If I was going to go for that, obviously it means I can completely forego any accuracy. And critical strikes. Yes, exactly, because they wouldn't be useful to me. But it means that if I just built pure damage, this makes things a lot simpler. Having said that, I want to be able to get critical strikes, so it's unlikely that I'll choose this one on this particular character. So I've got to reallocate my points so that we can start playing, and obviously I'll get the, the easy damage ones. Now, I was going two-handed on this character, so that means I can pick up some of the easy two-handed ones. Make sure you get your attributes. That's right. So I need some intelligence to use this fireball gem. Sorry, fire storm gem. To be honest, I mean, I just had it in there as a joke, so I'm going to rip it out and get it later on if I need it. 
that means I can focus on strength on this guy. I do need to get some strength so I can actually use more items. And I'm sure that I'm going to require, like, if I find a better mall, it's going to need more strength as well, so I have no problem getting a few points of that, knowing that it will be useful. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's given me a few extra points of strength, which of course increases my damage and life. If I were you, I probably wouldn't have gone that way with the strength, because you'll notice that there's some strength attributes just below where you went with the uh, melee damage, and you might have been able to get around to there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> a little bit more thought can be, <laughs> can be good. Yeah. But, I, I, don't, uh, I don't mind going down here. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so where were, we, where were we when we... Uh, we just got the prisoner's gate just got the prisoner's gate. All right. Oh, wait, you know what we forgot to do? What's that? Hearty up. Oh, okay. Alrighty, <laughs> so my character name is Chris Marauder. Chris... Okay, I'm going to come to you. <clears throat> Alright, just use the business management uh, from back at the shore. So I don't know how many of you guys know about this, but it tells me here there are two instances of the Prisoner's Gate, and I can also create a new one. So the first instance is empty, because that's the one I was just in, and that expires in about 15 minutes. Whereas the other one is where Ranger DF, Jonathan's character, is. I'm going to join that one. Alright. So we can continue playing where we left off. Remember not to click so much this day. Oh, that's right. I'm going to try to make an effort to hold down to move. Now, one thing you'll notice immediately, hopefully, is that my Marauder's killing stuff a lot faster than last time. Nothing has changed with my items, except now that we're using 094, I have the benefit of the new balance. And one of the things we did was just make items, uh, weapons that is, relatively more powerful. It's funny, because the way that we did that was actually not just to directly increase the damage values on weapons. Yeah, we were happy with how high those were, but we wanted them to have more of a relative effect. Is that Warhammer any good for you? It's one-handed, and uh, I just... Oh, okay, sorry, one-handed. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we reduce the, the uh, life of the monsters and reduce the damage of non-weapon things. Now, it, it's worth pointing out, this doesn't mean that witches do less damage. Relative to the monsters' life. Yeah, I mean, they still kill the monsters in the same number of hits, so... Hopefully, they'll be having just as much fun as before, but now marauders like me will find it less frustrating. Yeah. One of the things our lead artist is especially worried about is that he doesn't want the numbers to get too high. Um... Like it doesn't really, ma in some ways it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, so long as everything is relatively the same. Um, but we don't really want you to have like, you know, 100,000 life. Um, you know, we'd rather the numbers were kind of smaller. The problem is, is that if you make them too small, then you lose granularity, so that if you get like a 5% increase to something, um, it doesn't actually really have any effect, because you have, you know, if you've only got uh, a very small amount of something, then a 5% increase isn't going to be seen. Um, so in order to make the early game okay, uh, with regard to percentage increases, we kind of need to... We sort of settled on the values that we have now. Yeah. The reason why Eric's so interested in this is he's played a lot of other action RPGs. And he's seen how confusing it is when you get these giant inflated values. Well, you get these, um, you know, it, it, typically at the end game of a, of a lot of different games, you start to get just completely ridiculous numbers. Um, and, you know, so we, we don't want to start too early with that kind of thing because it could get out of hand. I'm definitely finding I can kill the monsters in less hits. Hopefully. I still think I need a bit of bow, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> what are you using at the moment? Uh, what have I got? I've got a... Uh, oh yeah, Carrion Blast. Nice. I can't remember last, uh, which is a um, composite bow. So I think, is, is that actually the correct bow for this level? I'm not sure, sorry. What's the required level on it? Um, Ten. So and jury level. So it's, not, it's actually not that far off. You can always do with a better bow, though. Sure, you can always do with a better bow. I understand that you split out the uh, accuracy bow passives from the damage ones. Yeah, we did that because people were just getting accuracy for free, and there was no uh, choice that went into it really. Now you have a choice: more damage or accuracy. We've actually raised the mana cost of some of the early melee skills, but then flattened them off a lot at higher levels. So it means that rather than being able to use Infernal Blow completely at will without any mana issues like I was doing to some extent last time, now it's a little harder, but later on mana isn't so much of a problem for the Marauder. Unless he builds some kind of uber chain of support gems together. Rather ah, burning curse. Ah, ah. Sorry. <laughs> you lost your cursor? Yes, I lost my cursor. Okay, so you're just standing here. 
you can't blame lag on the servers and eight us away, right? Right. People uh. have actually commented on this thing here, where you see how there's a white outline of the shadow, and you can kind of see it if I put my character shadow, this bit of a white, white outline here. People think it's a bug and it gets reported a lot, but it's actually a side effect of the way we're doing shadows. Oh well, yeah, that, that type of shadows is called variance shadow mapping, and it has this thing called light bleeding that occurs. Um, when you have one thing, one shadow hitting on another, um, it's generally not that noticeable, uh, and we prefer the effect that variant shadow shadow maps get us, which is like quite nice, uh, like soft edges to uh, our shadows that are relatively cheap uh, to render. Um, so that's kind of why we use that shadow method. Uh, in a lot of games that have very high what they call depth complexity, which is where um, you know you've got things that are very close to the camera and things that are very far away. Uh, it, and it makes a, it, it can be a huge problem for those types of games, but for a game like ours that is top down, um, it actually works pretty well because there's not very many situations where that kind of artifact occurs. Yeah. So we appreciate the bug reports, but we know of that one. Yeah, I, I, my, my understanding is, is there's a few techniques we can use to reduce that that aren't implemented yet, but um, you know, I haven't actually worked on the graphics stuff for quite a while now, and it's something that I'll be looking into pretty soon. So I don't know if you've had, uh, you've got a gem that's leveled up there, Chris? Hey, you're right, and I didn't notice. Yeah, but I probably shows <laughs> probably shows you that we need to uh, make those icons brighter. Yeah, so down here there's a, um, a notification saying that my sweep gem has hit a new level. This basically means that if I look at the gem itself, it's sitting at the maximum experience of the previous level, and I now get a choice of whether I can level it up. In this case, I will do. And we're trying to make sure that this actually shows people that they have gems that can be leveled. We've Bas put notifications down here, but as you can see, it's relatively easy to miss them unless you're paying attention. Basically, people were complaining about the fact that there were some there were cases where they didn't want to have their gem level up because it either increased the mana to something that they didn't want to have to cast, or um, they didn't really they they knew they weren't going to have the requirements um, after they de equipped some other item or some other situation like that. Yeah. So because of that, we want to give people a choice uh, to level up. And the other the other reason is because it's a bit more meaningful, uh, like. Before, if a gem leveled up, if you didn't, it's easy sort of not to notice that it was happening, um, and so to not really understand the system very well. If you have to level it up manually, it's a lot more meaningful. Like you know, oh, you see that it's leveled up, and now it's like I have to click this thing to actually to actually do it. It gives you more of the consciously leveling things up feeling. Do you know when I can get rain of arrows? By the way, um, was it a Brutus rule? Um, it might be actually. Uh, do you know where the waypoint is? It's up here. Remember how we were looking for that in the last Ah, uh, yes, in the ladder rush uh, <laughs> last week. <laughs> spent so uh, we spent quite a while. In fact, it probably contributed to us losing our uh, first place on the yeah. ladder. I think when we entered this area, we might have been in the, in the lead. Yeah. Here's the waypoint here. Oh, nice. You know, I'm just going to go back to town and get my reward. So one of our priorities is going to be finding a way to make both the notification of skill gems being ready to level and also this passive skill point that's been bugging me for a while. Those are going to be larger, more noticeable, basically just glowing in your face so it's hard to miss them. Hmm. I actually don't really have any items with sockets that can use... I have to downgrade one of my items to get sockets. You do have a... Um... Oh, I've got a... Uh... No, no, I don't. Right? I don't. Actually. I'm sure I can find you I've something. got a fusing orb, but not a... Here's a chromatic orb. We need to leave town for me to give yeah. it to you. Let's go to the ship graveyard. Good luck on the roll. My, see, my bow actually doesn't have any uh, any green sockets at all. Chromatic orb. Yay! Okay, so I got a green now, and so that means I could use my rain of arrows. If you need some flasks, because I've got some spares here. Yeah, that's actually probably pretty damn good. Large mana flask? Okay. Yeah, I was kind of using minor ones. Man, I'm using so much junk. Look at this plate vest. It's like literally a level 1 item. I, I could pick up <laughs> any of the, like... Get mammoth plates or whatever that have been dropping and use it. Okay, 67 life regen. Well, why don't we just put some mods in it? Bang. Cast speed. How useful. I'm going to re-roll that. Uh, not so good. Augment. <sighs> re-roll. <laughs> okay, it'll do. <laughs> <laughs> not so awesome. That's a direct upgrade there. Do you want a life ring? Um, what have I got? I've got, I've got a mana ring. Yeah, uh, uh, I've got physical damage on, I've got an iron ring 
at the moment, so I'm kind of keen to keep the damage since I'm feeling a little light at the moment. Okay. Well, the rain of arrows should help quite a bit. Yeah, it's a good skill. I'm just going to quickly rifle my flasks on this weapon. Right. We just go back to town? Alright, we're turning flasks. Yeah, change flasks out of town. One of the things we need to do is um, make it so that rather than just going back to town, you have to talk to the healer to re refill your flask in life. Just because we kind of want it to not be like a kind of instant, you just go back to town and immediately back out again. Um, you know, it's, it's, much, it's much nicer thematically to actually have to visit the healer to yeah. do that. And it adds an opportunity cost, so you can't just quickly use right. the top portal scroll in one second to be back. Right. Hey, it's Fairgraves. He's going to tell us to find this slave girl who has the ore flame. Yeah. I'm not really sure who the healer would be in um, an Act 2 town. That's a good question. Maybe, uh... Maybe Yena? Yena, yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Eric probably has a good idea of what he yeah. wanted to do for that. Yeah, I'm sure he's planned that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Yeah. This guy has the major damage increase order. Thankfully, no guys around. So now you'll notice, for example, if I find a caster robe, it requires 38 intelligence, I just can't equip that, whereas previously it would basically let me for free. We really wanted to make the requirements game a lot stronger, to actually make a game out of the requirements system. Yeah, it was kind of a, like, it, this is a bit tricky for us, because we do want to promote freedom of being able to use, um, you know, the items from any class. But we just kind of want you to have to put a bit of, at least a token effort. Mm. Uh, and there are lots it. of ways to get attributes. Yeah, there are lots of ways to get attributes. So basically, if you want to do something, then you can generally, um, you know, either use the passive tree in a slightly different way, or um, use items to supplement. Um, those, those gloves might be good for Disc, deer skin gloves? They sound dexish. They do. Hey, that's another gem level up notification that I hopefully didn't leave for too long. <laughs> yeah, we probably need to make those bright or something. We probably need to even try and get that in before the next patch. Yeah. Before before the you know, before Zero and Four goes up. We can probably just hop things up on the day. Yeah. I'll talk to Harry on Monday. Hey, yeah. a bone stuff. It's not a mall, but I haven't committed to malls yet, so. You've just committed to two hand? Yeah. Which is nice because it means I don't have to. So what does this do? My DPS goes down by a lot. Okay. <laughs> Let's say no. So one of the things Chris was um, pretty proud of was his designs that he came up with for his level 1 DPS character for the competition. Yeah, we shouldn't um, give away what it involves. Yeah, he's not, we're not going to give away what it involves, but um, he basically sort of fairy crafted the, the best build he could think of. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if a better build. Though it was done with a little bit of 094's balance in play. That's true. So I don't know how exactly comparable the DPS is. Oh, it should be pretty close. It's high though. <laughs> Much higher than anything anyone of the forums has. Well, I was using cheats to reroll the items. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in terms of the theoretical maximum, is surprisingly high, put it that way. Yeah. But that's cool. We don't want to dissuade people from trying their characters. It's already yeah. hard enough to build them. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um, we sort of expected that the. Like, there are a few people there who are not really valuing the mirror, which is interesting because the value of the mirror is as. Is, as high as the highest item can be, like, because you can just dupe whatever the highest rarity thing is with the mirror, um, if you have one. So it only gets more valuable. Yeah, so it only economy. gets more as, as the economy gets uh, gets better. But um, the funny thing is, is that, you know, like, we would sort of hope that people would recognize the fact that it is ultimately the, um, the best possible item to have in a game like this. It may be a bit of an exalted orb that's more useful on actually moving your character. Potentially. I guess one of the things is, um, you know, you have to actually find a guy to, to get an item off. I sort of hope that there will be uh, trades that are involved allowing people to use, um, you know, the item that they have, as well as having to give something else to them. Yeah where the trade window would support the ability to... Well, we could do that. I mean, they have that kind of thing in World of Warcraft, right? Where you can... the trade window supports applying... A like lockpicking and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could do that. 
Yeah, I'll try and try and be aware of that. <laughs> I always forget. Just like I'd forgotten there was a passive point, and so had you. I'm gonna get some decks and you know, for this I think better item. Yeah, that's a lot for DPS. Now I'm going to reroll it. Please don't let the level go up. Um, small amount of accuracy and cold damage is okay. What's the DPS on your character first? On this character here is seventy eight point eight. Okay, I'm only like about fifty. I just got a new weapon that broke too long brought me from 50 health. Uh, this is something I can really... I don't have any particular optimization opportunities at the moment. Do you have many currency items available? Nah, not really. You yeah. steal them all right. That's what people in the comments seem to say. <laughs> yeah. We're looking for the ore flame, right? I believe we are. Okay, well we should go out there. I mean, in the random direction we would need to go. <laughs> well, it, it's generally, I think it's generally along the, um, the somewhere along the wall, on the, ba on the back. Yeah. Just a little. It's kind of tough because we could have this area be 100% random, as in you have no idea where the exit is. That would be very easy with our system, but then it doesn't follow the coastline, but it's consistent <laughs> with the map. Yeah. yeah, the levels are kind of, um, like, we, we kind of wanted to have controlled randomness. Um, as in, the you kind of vaguely know what's going to be on the level, but um, hopefully not where. Hopefully not exactly where. And remember to get your all play. Oh yeah. The Fairgrass fight is actually relatively hard, which is good. I mean, eventually we'll have all of the optional boss fights be pretty horrible, which is nice. I mean, <laughs> horrible in a difficult point of view. where we have those green skeletons walking around, rarely, is that it forces the engine to preload them so that it doesn't lag when they appear in the uh, fights that we're about to do. One of the things that's really surprising um, is how bad people's hard drive performance is. I know. It's like, it's really, it, like, people seem to have terrible, terrible hard drives, so loading any, absolutely anything off them during gameplay um, just completely kills performance. Yeah, I mean, my, my development machine here is a solid state drive, so I'll measure like, you know, a 50th of a second to load something, and then an actual person in the wild gets over a second because they've got three virus checkers installed and their hard drive's fragmented, <laughs> and it's made in 2002 and failing. And they're uploading at the same time. <laughs> Even doing it in a thread uh, still were pretty damn slow. Yeah, I was very surprised. So we just preload everything. That's one of those things that when we get time to sort out, I'm sure we can come up with a more intelligent way. things in the commit history like added more tar to the tar zombies. <laughs> I don't know if that's in 094 or or if it's in 095. But we may see tar on the tar zombies. I believe there's a side area for this area coming pretty soon, isn't there? Yeah. So um And there's this one for the uh, Shipraid as well planned. Right. 
yeah, I believe there's going to be some kind of. Um, I think it's a reskin of the of the cave tile set um, to kind of look like a sort of tar covered, you know, sort of tar pit thing. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I believe there's supposed to be some kind of some kind of boss in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll be like giving up passive skill points for that kind of thing. Right. And eventually some single point respec points, so that people can fix mistakes. Yeah, that'll be real handy if um, you take one of the keystone passives that you don't have to be kind of actually you don't like. Yeah. This is going to be such a big difference. So I might just uh, hold on to that composite bow there just in case um, I get something useful to upgrade it with. Do you want this transmute? Yes, actually. Hey, I exploded the guy so that he doesn't transform. Nah, it was crap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one of the things that, um, one bug that there is currently is that if you cause a shield crab to shatter or explode or something like that, um, then it won't actually drop any items. Uh, which is a bug that we're intending to fix, but, um, yeah. It's kind of funny because we kind of see the, you know, destroying the shield crab before it turns into a... Um, into a sand spitter is kind of an advanced thing. Well, not really advanced, but you know, like it's a it's a tactic to take. Yeah. Uh, but it actually hurts you with items, which is kind of a shame. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll be fixing it. Really well. People find the uh, sand spitters a lot more frustrating than we initially thought. Well, yeah, I mean that's just um, the the main reason for that is because they have to sort of change targets halfway through the fight with it. There's kind of some vague plan at some point to change it so that the sand spitter is the same entity as the shield crab. Um, but currently, the the shield crab sort of dies, and the sand spitter is a new thing that we spawn in the same place where it was. Yeah, I've just noticed when I target the tiles on the blue outline. Blue. It's probably because there's some kind of effect um, being applied to them that uh, rustle at us. Uh, one one of the things that we need to do is um, currently if you have two effects being on, applied on the same monster then the effect of one will apply on top of the effect of the other in a way that kind of looks bad sometimes. Uh, you'll just notice especially that happens when you mo ha mouse over a monster that has uh, that's on fire the outside to the fire effect will actually disappear. Um, it's something I've been intending to fix for a while but um, haven't got around to it yet. As I said I've been kind of uh, working on things other than graphics for uh, quite a while now, mostly just service and quality stuff. Um, because as we've scaled up the beta, um, you know, suddenly new problems you can notice appear. Your 095 stuff is looking promising. Yeah, so 095, um, the primary thing is uh, sell vendors. That's vendors that you sell to. Sell to, yeah. I mean, they should probably be called trade vendors because you're not actually selling things with gold. Instead, you're selling things to get um, currency. Yeah, it's a bartering. It's a, it's a bartering. It's recipes. The, the interface for it is actually the same as what um, trade will be, um, because you know trade will kind of work the same. It's just that with a, an NPC, when you put items in the window, you know they've always got something to trade for it. And we, uh, we talk about that in the beta manifesto a little bit, with a couple of like relatively old examples of recipes. Yeah, well, I mean. It, a sort of quintessential example of this kind of thing would be um, if you have find like a, 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 a 20 quality item on the ground, uh, if you trade it in to um, an NPC, they'll give you a uh, the quality upgrade item for that type. So if you find a, a, a 20 quality flask, even if you don't intend to use that flask, you can trade it in to get a, a quality upgrade. Yeah. And so we're kind of wanting to try and promote um, you know players sort of know. The, the valuable things to look for on the ground um, because they're worth uh, specific things in, in trade with NPC. Um, as well as quite a few random recipes that, uh, well, arbitrary recipes um, that players will sort of find out over time. So we're only going to actually talk about, uh, you know, some of the recipes and sort of uh, have them online. We want the players to find out the rest. And um, they'll share them pretty fast. Yeah, they'll share them pretty fast for sure. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to sort of see how that works out, like what recipes we'll find and what don't. We have to sort of drop some hints, some of the more complicated ones. Um, but yeah, there should be a recipe, I believe, for every um, 
for every type of, uh, of currency item. Is, is my understanding that that's, that's the goal, right? Yeah, they're generally pretty. Uh, pretty onerous. Yeah, some, some of the hard pretty ones. lossy recipes, I guess yeah. you could say. As in, it's a way of getting it, but it may be better to trade with a player to do the same thing. Right. It's also an interesting yardstick where you can say, well, the NPC would give me three of this for it, so can you beat it? The Cavern of Wonage. Wonage. I can use the waypoint to get some passive points in town. True. I think this still has something for me. Yeah, people will probably be making quite a few more town trips. Um, well, I mean, they don't have to, but if they, um, you know, to trade for good stuff. Hmm, I've run out of red sockets. We strike sweep and fertile blow. Which do I not want to use? Chromatic orb. Red socket. Uh -huh. It's great when it just works. <laughs> I'm just destroying my rares now because we don't have the shops yet. Right. Probably should keep them for you know the video in a couple of weeks. So one of the things people don't often notice about this level is that there's actually a river that goes from one side of it to the other, and the random generator kind of. Um, weaves the river through, uh, you know, using a set of rooms um, that sort of have rivers going in one side and out the other. It was kind of complicated tech to write, so hopefully people appreciate it. Um, which actually allows us to do a variety of um, effects that are similar in code, but actually they may not seem similar to the players. Like, for example, like the blood trail? Yeah, the blood trail in um, Bruce's level yeah. is actually done using the same tech as the river in this cave. I really want the guys to see the new Brutus stuff, because it yeah. looks so much nicer now. The new Brutus stuff does look nice, but they'll see it when they play. Yeah. You don't have to show it now. Um, there's actually a big upgrade plan for Brutus, so, you know, at, at some point in the future. So hopefully that stuff will get in the future. Ah, cabin skittles. I remember, like, we need another monster for this cave, why don't we throw a spider in? Okay, but remove it within a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, goes by. <laughs> well, I don't know. The spiders are fine in here. They're sort of small, right? I, I dare not remove them. They'll be like a five-page thread. <laughs> Some of the placeholder monsters are actually getting removed from the waterfall caves in Zero Nine Five. Right. For those special new skeletons and other monsters that you see. Ah, yes. Is there anything that we haven't, um, we haven't shown yet for Zero Nine Five in terms of monsters? Oh, do you mean in Zero Nine Four? Oh, or so Zero Nine Four. Well, the Zero Nine Five stuff isn't really enough yet. It's kind of a, a half-done thing. Um, what change with monsters to 094? I... Oh, they were the skeletons in the cathedral of bone. Yeah, those the, look really nice now. The glowing hands. You know, I could just spawn one. <laughs> and then we... <laughs> maybe, maybe it you would kill us. <laughs> yeah, probably, actually. Do you know what they throw? Uh, I have no idea. Sorry. Do you ever, like, load the config editor on your side? No, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. They do look pretty awesome, though. Look out for them. What is going to be called? Yeah. Like some artillery support from back here. See, I'm keen now. Alright, second level. So this level has the, uh... The whispers. Yeah, the, the whispers of the... And the people. That one was kind of interesting, because, um... When we were filming the witch video, we had the voice actor just sort of do some extra... extra whispers. It was kind of embarrassing to ask some random girl. Yeah. Okay, we want you to whisper in a seductive way. Yeah. Not seductive enough. <laughs> yeah, Again, not seductive enough. Yeah. We're in a room full of guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same time as playing and trying to find out the name. Yeah, Chris, just drop it. Yeah, but we'll see them. We'll get to them in, uh, you know, next week's video. Yes. 
but wouldn't it be awesome? Let's drop it. I hear spikes more, but it's the potential to be better. If I get lucky. Was that lucky enough? No. <laughs> What's your uh, current mace? Like, what does it have on it? It has cold damage and accuracy. That's just blood? Yeah. Right. Technically, I have a rare bow. But, um, the mod's pretty crap. Okay, I was gonna say, it's either rare or it's not, you know. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Woodfall stuff, so there's a story with this. Oh, right. Well, Woodfall's my middle name, so Eric just decided to, you know, have this fun there. But the stuff actually, story. yeah, the stuff actually looks like, um, a, a real stuff that I have. That I, uh, bought quite a long time ago. I see some companies go and commission these intricate models of things that they have in the game, whereas we just get the game models after things that are lying around in the office. <laughs> well, the staff has actually shown quite a lot of use when you, uh, you know, you want to demonstrate an animation to someone. You know, just pick up the staff and swing it around a bit. Ow. <laughs> yeah, Mervail is going to own us. Um, well, we're level 15, that's not so bad. I think she's level 16, judging by this monster level thing. Yep. I'm gonna put my passive point in first. In fact, three passive points. How's that for getting a button? Yep. Okay. Well, we're, we're gonna make that icon better so that you actually notice it. That's good in life. I mean, we are playing hardcore. That's true. Where did you go? All the way up to her? Ah, uh, not quite yet, no. Okay. You should probably wait for me. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. She packs a bit of a punch with those fireballs. I don't think we're going to have too much trouble with those. We're not really under the... I mean, when we got here in the rush, I think we were the whole... What would it be have been? Yeah, but I was playing a witch then, and that was 0 9 3 bombs. Ow. Now you're a marauder, and you see you've got the, the damage boost. Ow. So good. Faces. I'm just gonna get out of the way. <laughs> it's not so bad. I didn't, even, I, I, I didn't even lose any life during that. Oh, I was tanking some fire. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm relatively happy with how that fight goes so in terms of difficulty. Like, it's nice that it's hard. Oh, it was not for me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, so we have a bit Wait, the short bow? No, it's not gonna be better than. Composite, is it? We're de we definitely have plans to improve the drops of the axe bosses. As soon as they're not quite so farmable. Hey, a sledgehammer, that's the next one. Yeah, basically, once we make it so that you can't just repeat the level at 30 second intervals. Alright. Remora's spiked mall of iron. How long will we go? Uh, I have no way of telling. Didn't now we're in Acts 2. Didn't note down the time? Nah. Well, I mean, we could, uh... Well, let's I mean, get that's, the, that's the second half of Acts We'll just get to town and yeah, then, uh, call, it a, call it a day, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the, uh, the first sort of forest test level that we made, I believe. It looks a lot nicer now. It looks now. a lot nicer now, these yeah. crisis crisis <laughs> Crisis trees is here. Is that green tongue any good for you? No, when I hit level 16 I've got an awesome weapon coming up. Or by awesome I mean a higher base type. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, it's amazing how much better Act 2 looks than Act 1 now. We actually need to go back and, um... There are some nice places in Act 1. There are some nice places, the, well, the prison the especially, yeah. I mean, the, the, the prison and caves I'm really, I'm totally happy with, but the beach we need to make look a bit better. Yeah, well there are some changes in 095, you know. Right. On our local goals. The main thing, the, the main thing actually, is the ocean water. Um, it just doesn't look good enough. Like it was kind of made, most by me actually. I mean, Eric made the textures, um, but it was kind of a test thing, um, and it sort of lasted until this day. Um, and so there's a lot of tech improvements that need to go into making it look better. Um, and then I think that'll spice up the beach quite a lot, as well as just like some random things. Like for example, um, when you walk in the water, it should splash. And, you know, just random little polish things that I think will make the beach just seem more beachy. Um, 
Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really happy with how the forest turned out. It seems pretty yeah. foresty. X3 <laughs> is coming along. Well. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm not really, can't really talk about that yet. But, um, but it's yeah, I mean, nice. it, it looks so nice. Like, some of the stuff in Act 3, um, you know, I think it'll... I think it'll be even nicer than Act 2. Uh, when we're done with it. That's the thing about time, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're getting better, right, at making stuff, like... Well, the artists are. <laughs> I just stayed awesome. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. So you're, you're, what you're saying is that you, the balance has uh, not improved at all, then? Why? I think I'll do that now. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So you just hide someone else. They're yelling at people until the work is done is about the same. Okay. I mean, once you reach a certain speed of copying revision numbers into a spreadsheet, it kind of doesn't go anywhere from there. There's a lot of that. I, I can't argue on the prop 20% faster than last year, though. Okay, <laughs> well, that's always a good skill. I got caught in some relatively long threads yesterday. Yeah, well, some people say it's not a good idea to, um, you know, argue in threads like that, but the problem is, is that we do actually want to kind of interact with our community, like we want them to actually know that we are caring about what they're talking about. We definitely spend a lot of time valuing their opinions. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, just... it's easy, to, it's very easy to kind of, you know, you see some opinion you don't like and kind of say, oh, yeah, that guy's just an idiot. But um, in reality, all of the opinions that people express are expressed for a reason. Yeah. Like, there's always something they didn't like, even if they're actually wrong about what it is. Well, well even even if they're wrong about what, um, you know, what it is they think would fix it, uh, they're generally at least there is a valid problem that they have. That's true. I'm very interested to see what they think of 094, actually. I mean, it's great that they're giving us feedback on the patch notes, but hopefully the feedback on the yeah, game well, itself... Yeah, well, it's funny, be... because, you know, like, it's easy to read patch notes and sort of think, well, this sounds like it sucks, but when you actually play it, it's a lot better. Hey, there's another 094 feature we can show you. If I click on this guy to get a quest, it says stop the bandolers from attacking the town using the new quest notification art. Okay. <laughs> this is very proud of that art. I didn't have anything to do with it. I was literally surprised what evening we were going <laughs> yeah, to bring the game look, to that guy. It does look pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, thank you very much for watching our uh, playthrough. I mean, hopefully you haven't got too bored by this point. Yeah, we'll do plenty more, hopefully. We got a pretty good reception from the last one. Yeah, so we'll probably try and do it once a week, hopefully showing off any kind yeah. of new stuff that we're doing good way to spend a Saturday afternoon encoding video. Okay. Okay, well thanks very much guys. Okay. Right. Bye. See you later.